or do you want me to ring the bell? I want you to ring the bell three, three times. times. Do you want me to do it now? I want you to do it now. Good morning. Good morning and welcome on this frigid day. Can you hear me? Can you, you, you cannot hear me. Can you hear me? Yes. Don't, bro, yeah, hmm? Okay. I'm going to ring the bell. This is the space between summer and winter. Between the light and the dark between the living and the dead. This service is going to contrast and compare the Day of the Dead, which we're going to be exploring in a second, uh, with Halloween and the holiday that uh, I'm familiar with, um, and how it's kind of like archaeology, this particular time of year, liminal space a chance to be different from the way you usually are. If you'd rather be a pirate, if you'd rather be a cat, uh, if you want to try out some new forbidden aspect of yourself, it seems to be this liminal time. Because all the cultures seem to agree that this particular time is close to another world one in which our ancestors have gone. So, we've got here a few mementos of our friends who have come before our ancestors. We're going to be lighting the candle for those people. We light this candle for those that are present and those that have come before. And Leslie is going to... <laughs> Hello, Bruce. <laughs> Leslie's going to light a candle for the hidden concerns that we each bring here each week. We have things on our hearts that are private. And our last candle is the candle of global concerns. It seems to be a time when we need to reflect more on conflict around the world. Conflict which is left unresolved and now seems to be turning to war. May we find peace. Our community meets on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish people. Let's begin reconciliation by forging con connections with our immediate neighbors, the Suela Tooth and Coast Salish reservations here on the North Shore. You are welcome. Your entirety is welcome here things that you do well, things that are more difficult, all of you are welcome here. I hope that you find this place, as I do, a place of deep friendships, stimulating ideas, leading to actions. In a minute, I'm going to make a change. We've done a few things differently today. The choir is not here. Allison is not here. Uh, Catherine is not here. I'm going to be doing some music. And the first thing I'm going to do is a representation of our community. In our beloved community, we have a large number of music therapists. And we have in music therapy musical forms that are uncommon. 
Uh, they are designed to be really accessible to people, but they're very different. Do you want to try something? Are you up for something different? At this liminal time? Okay. First of all, you can't go wrong. I'm going to ask you to sing a note, any note. I want you to sing it out. It's going to sound like the wrong note because we haven't planned this. It'll jar. It'll be jarring. Then, when you're out of breath, I want you to take another breath and sing a different note, any note. Because of our socialization, we're going to have the second one be quite harmonious. Then, we're going to create a musical piece together. I'll give you a few directions. Are you ready? Do you want to stand up, if you're able? First of all, your shoulders, your hands, big breath, one more big breath. Now after this next breath, I want you to sing a note, any note, but it must be loud. Are you ready? Here we go. Another note. Now this time we're going to keep it going, all right? So you breathe whenever you feel like it and listen to the community. Are you ready? Here we go. Big breath. to the beginning, we're going to make a sound, but I want you to do it wrong. A lot of times we try and do things right, we hold back. I want you to make 
a sound, any sound, and I want it to be the wrong sound. Are you ready? Here we go. Big breath. <gasps> so much. <laughs> so we're going to be contrasting and comparing Halloween with the Day of the Dead. And Halloween has always had this spooky element to me. I enjoyed going door to door. Uh, when I was young, we lived in uh, Connecticut and Ottawa, and when I was uh, seven, we went over to uh, France. And one of the first things I noticed was there is no Halloween in Europe. Uh, I know, shocking. <laughs> there is All Hallows Eve, which is the night before All Saints Day. That's the big day. And the idea of running around from house to house is a non-starter to collect candy. But on the other hand, Samhain, which is what it's all based on, is an incredibly creepy time uh, where the witches come out, where the spirits of the dead roam. They're let out of the underworld on the 31st. So when I started this uh, service, uh, Deanna Diaz had suggested doing something on the day of the dead, and I looked into that, and it just seems like a great idea. I didn't grow up in that. But on the Day of the Dead, and we've got a couple of people who are dressed in that. Could you stand up, please? <laughs> so it's skulls. It's, it's skulls, it's bones, it's dead people, so there's a similarity, but it's a call to connect with the ancestors. Very different. And this image up here of the skull with all the flowers is a bit of a grind on what we think of when we have a skeleton. We think of death, uh, and it's kind of a creepy thing. Whereas this one, is a loving, warm thing. And in the Mexican world, 
on the 1st and the 2nd of November, you connect with your ancestors. Do we connect with our ancestors? In our culture, we are kind of shiftless. To go to the cemetery for a picnic would seem bizarre. Uh, to go to the cemetery where my grandparents are laid to rest, I actually don't know where that is. Um, one of them might be in Ontario somewhere. And how many of you know where your family is laid to rest? Okay, that's why I'm doing this service. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to find out. Um, so, uh, Deanna can't be with us. She was going to be uh, helping me out with this, uh, but she got bitten by her dog last night. Apparently the dog was under the car and wouldn't come out, and uh, so I don't know quite where she is, but uh, she is uh, certainly not here. She grew up with this idea that the Day of the Dead is a positive, warm thing, and that we can connect with people uh, who have gone before and on whose uh, lives our lives are uh, a big part of. So I'm going to have to keep that a little shorter than I had planned. Uh, Deanna had a little tune she was going to do, and she was even going to help me with my uh, guitar playing until the dog bit both her hands that way. So the big difference between Halloween and the Day of the Dead is the emotional tone. We have this scary part uh, that is quite different and they've got a warm feeling when you look at that. And I thought if we could uh, do a little work on that, that would be good. Personally, I do find Halloween a bit of a creepy time and not so much because the spirits of the dead are wandering. Uh, it's more because the spirits of the living are doing strange things at this time of year. Uh, how many of you have raised children to the teen years? Well, you might empathize with me. One of uh, our children, Liz and my children, was uh, uh, bullied at school and uh, I was unable to resolve that. And Halloween was a time when he would go to the park and meet his friends and they were all drunk with fireworks. And it's kind of the busiest night of the year for the police uh, and especially police who didn't like teenagers. And when you put those th things together, you get kind of a bad outcome. And uh, our son got, uh, got bullied on Halloween on a number of occasions. So whenever Halloween comes up, I get a creepy feeling, but it's because of that. Our younger son, on the other hand, used to get arrested on Halloween. <laughs> He wasn't being bullied. First time it happened, he had a backpack full of uh, fireworks. We didn't know that he had enough money to buy the fireworks or where he was buying the fireworks. And then after that, he was the guy that didn't run away from the police at the drunken parties. Uh, so whenever we have Halloween to this day, I get that creepy feeling about it. So, we're going to have a meditation on the ancestors. Uh, if you would put your hands on, or your feet on the floor, take a deep breath. If you could come up here. Bruce. We have 
some pictures of the ancestors. Did anybody else bring any pictures of the ancestors? Would you pick them up and hold them up? Now my picture, which you've left on the table, is of my grandmother. She died in the 80s, and I feel her presence every now and again to this day, many years later. How many people here believe in ghosts? Put your hand up. Believe in ghosts. You're going to say yes? And how many people do not believe in ghosts? I'm in the wrong crowd here. <laughs> you know, growing up partly in England, uh, ghosts were, were just a thing. They were in every building, every old building had a ghost. Uh, I remember seeing a guy on TV who bought an old castle, turned it into a hotel, and he was trying to explain why they didn't have a ghost. He wished they did, but they just hadn't had one, and he felt kind of ashamed about it, unlike yourselves. So put those down. Close your eyes, and I want you to just think about those who've come before us, where they are, what they did for us, what they meant for us. Come on back, back to the present. We're going to move on to Samhain. Samhain is a Celtic time. It's the precursor to our Halloween. It's when these spirits come out and it's got um, some darkness about it. In England, the fairies come down from the hills into the valleys, and people would put fires on the edges of their property to ward them off, because people would be abducted by the fairies. And they'd disappear for a few days, and they would be probed, and they would be kind of assaulted, potentially, terminally. And after a few days, they would reappear. Have you heard of stories like that recently? There used to be quite a few alien abduction stories that worked exactly that way. I was abducted, I was probed, I was assaulted potentially, and then suddenly I was back. So I don't know if there's a connection between the fairies and the aliens, but uh, they both happen to country folk in uh, the dark of night usually. Witches would come out on Samhain, on the 31st. They would do their spells. It was a time for prophecy, a time for bonfires, and uh, a time for magic. We're going to have a little bit of magic in a few minutes. The Druids would gather in the woods and do their celebrations, sometimes dangerous ones, animal sacrifice. And famously, from the Roman point of view, they would sacrifice children, sometimes at this time of year. 
in order to ha maintain positive things in the, in the year to come, sometimes you had to have sacrifice. The Halloween that we've got in North America is a combination of a few things. Uh, dressing up at this time of year to confuse the spirits so that they can't attack you because they don't know who you are. You may be a spirit. And there's been a few places where going from door to door at this time of year is uh, something that was uh, worthwhile. And so they put those two things together here, which as I mentioned, isn't something that uh, goes on in, uh, over in Europe. So the Christians took over Samhain, made it into All Saints Day, then All Souls Day. All Souls Day is the day that we celebrate those that died with their faith intact. And so it is that the Irish Church wanted to have All Damned Day, the day of the damned. Only the Irish would be concerned about those particular people. They wanted them included partly as protection and partly because of the way they were treated by the English. Oh, I digress. <laughs> I digress. <clears throat> in England, uh, the lights are celebrated not on the 31st. They're celebrated on the 5th of November. Guy Fawkes Day, a completely different thing. Okay, I am going to give you a little bit of a puppet show. How am I going to do this? There we go. So, this is Mr. Monkey. Mr. Monkey is going to do our Halloween trick. Are you ready, Mr. Monkey? Why is that? I'm on strike. Uh, <laughs> It's not that, that time you're a puppet, you're, you're not in a union. I'm in a puppet union. Uh, look, there is no puppet union. Put the hat on. Okay. And now, for something complete. Can you see? Okay, I'll count to three, and off we go. You ready? Excellent. I like a cooperative puppet. Here we go. One. Two. Three. Okay, come on, try it again. One, two, yeah, that's it, 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 three. Oh, man. Come on, third time's a charm. One, two, that's it, that's it, that's it, three. Come on, don't catch yourself on fire. That's it, that's it, that's it. <gasps> whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Were you okay? Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I apologize for that.
Now, you know who I am. And you know now what I am. I have gone out a possessed witch, haunting the black air, braver at night, dreaming evil. I have done my hitch over the plain houses, light by light. Lonely thing, twelve-fingered thing, out of mind. A woman like that is not a woman, quite. I have been her kind. I have found the warm caves in the woods, filled them with skillets and carvings and shelves, closets, silks, innumerable goods. Ah, fixed the suppers for the worms and the elves, whining, rearranging the disaligned. A woman like that is misunderstood. I have been her kind. I have ridden in your cart, driver, waved my nude arms at villages going by, learning the last bright roots. Survivor, where your flames still bite my thigh, and my ribs crack where your wheels wind. A woman like that is not ashamed to die. I have been her kind. Now, hmm, you all know who I am. You all know what I am. I'm a witch. I'm an object of fun. I'm an object of fear. And when I take off my hat, and when I put down my broomstick, and shake off my cloak, it's still me. I'm still a witch, and a woman. But in your eyes, I'm not a woman, quite. Thank you. 
of gray are in the ocean a thousand shades of gray are in the air a thousand shades of gray are in the buildings everywhere Thank you. Um, after the service today, after you've had sandwiches downstairs, I'm going to be screening, with the help of the technical staff, a video from 1988, a CBC clip about an ancestor of, of our movement, Lotte Hitchmanova. So uh, it's an old grainy set of uh, video clips, but she was one of the formative influences, the executive director of Unitarian Service Canada, Unitarian Service Committee Canada, and that is the ancestor organization to seed change. Your donations for the outreach during this month of October are being directed to seed change, and I'll be talking a little bit about the work of USC, the predecessor organization, and what seed change does in the world today, where your donations are going to go. So after you've had a chance for sandwiches, you can meet me up here. Thanks very much. Thank you, Carrie. Um, I'm Barry Forbes, I'm president of the board, and I'm gonna invite everyone here to, on next Monday, not this Monday, but next Monday, the 6th of November, to an event at two o'clock in the afternoon in the church with a gal by the name of Ann Barker. Ann Barker is the CUC congregational lead for the Western, Western region. And she's coming here to, um, she's gonna be with us to talk about what's happening with the CUC and answer any questions that you have about what's happening with our denomination. Um, she's here as part of the in installation service with uh, Sean, Sean uh, Gauthier, Sean Gauthier at the UCV and we managed to uh, snag her in the afternoon of Monday, November 6th, here at the church. So please come, and it'll be a great chance for you to ask all your questions. And I'd also like to introduce Chris Miller. Chris Miller is going to do a testimonial for our, our uh, canvas, our, our stewardship campaign. Chris, over to you. Uh oh, I didn't know it was gonna be a testimonial. Hope this fits. <laughs> Um, I got asked to um, talk to you about pledging for next year, and when I was at, is this too loud? Okay. And when I was asked, I, my heart sank. I was like, oh brother, talk about <laughs> money in front of people, I don't know. But actually I really enjoyed, thank you Elaine for uh, asking me, because I enjoyed thinking about it and what my connection to this place is. Um, so I'm actually here to talk about pledging financial support for 
the church for 2024. Because in order to make plans, our board needs you, hopes that you'll make your pledge by mid-November. Wait, that's two weeks from now. Okay, many of you have probably already pledged the amount you plan to give in 2024. So I hope the rest of us will make our pledges soon. So my connection to the church, I started thinking about it, and I grew up in North Van in the 50s, and both my parents taught Sunday school at St. Catherine's Anglican Church in Edgemont Village. The story goes that one day they came home and one of them said to the other, you know, I don't really believe what I'm telling these kids. <laughs> and the other one said, yeah, me neither. <laughs> So they looked around, and at that time there was no Vancouver church, but there was a small group of Unitarians who were meeting in a house over town. So they met, and they joined that, and they helped find, found a Unitarian church in Vancouver. And then later on, some, they and some other people decided that two congregations would be a good idea because so many people were coming from the North Shore every week. They thought, let's, let's have two churches. So... And they helped to found the North Shore Unitarian Church in 1967. Thank you, Marcia, for that date. Uh, my parents remained members until they died. And they both died in their 90s. So, As for me, I did go to the Vancouver Sunday School for a couple of years. And I remember studying other religions and, and going to visit these places of worship for other religion. And it was very, very interesting, and I really enjoyed it. But my parents' influence over what I did on Sundays ended when I was 14 and I started skiing up Gross Mountain with my friends. <laughs> uh, after my dad died in 2010, uh, my mom stopped coming to church. And I'll always be grateful for the outreach of Allison Nixon, who called my mom and said, Hey, Eleanor, you haven't been at church lately. And I was wondering if you'd like me and some others to come and sing Christmas carols with you in one day. And my mom loved that. And so three of them came over to mom's house. And I budged in and came too. And uh, we sat, sat in the living room and sang Christmas carols. And it was really lovely. Um, and when it was over, I told Allison how much I enjoyed it. And I said, I just love singing. And I've never been in a choir. And I wish I had and Allison said, well, why don't you join? Which is, I guess I was okay enough of a, song, a singer. So as intimidated as I was, I did join. My mom started to come back to church on Sundays, the days that we sang, which is really nice. I always remember her and B sitting together. Yeah. Um, so this is, fits in with this ancestor thing too. <laughs> I realize, yeah. So uh, choir, the practices, and the Sunday singing is always a highlight of my week. I've made new friends, and I've also found a community in it, and which has now extended beyond the choir. So this is a really important place to me. And one other story. Shortly after joining the choir, I went on a women's weekend retreat that was organized by Liz Moffat and Catherine Nicholson. And spending the weekend with women from the church, I was blown away by how everyone treated everyone else with kindness, gentleness, and acceptance. And I thought, wow, these people actually practice what they preach. There's a rare group of people and a rare community here, and I feel lucky to be part of it. And I'm happy to financially contribute to the running of such a community. There's a history here that's really worth supporting. And I'm thinking that in this time of transition, it's not a good time to not have enough money to do what we need to do to move forward. We've got these stars like Carrie and Leslie and others who are volunteering to give us very meaningful and wonderful Sunday services. And other people working on the board and making soup and butterfly gardens and maintaining the building and grounds and all sorts of other people. So please show your support and give generously to our community. Thank you. Six weeks ago, from this podium, Barry over there said, oh, I think... 
six weeks ago. Uh, Barry over there said that we are not a broken congregation after what we had gone through that summer. And six weeks down the road, we have had a series of fabulous services. I have to say it's a rarity in my 35 years that I have felt uh, that the next service is going to be a great one. Um, and uh, I think that that's actually true because the next service is going to be, do you want to say anything about it? Thanks, Carrie. I hope I'll see you all next Sunday. We're going to have a service on pilgrimages. And I think for most of us, life is a pilgrimage, but some of us have taken very, um, very specific ones. And so four members of our congregation are going to talk to us about their pilgrimages. And I'm really looking forward to it. So I hope I'll see you then. Next Sunday, make a pilgrimage come to church. And the last announcement that I have is we could use a little help uh, with a couple of things. Ushers and greeters, if you would like to help Liz over there uh, with greeters or ushering, please see her. And I'm organizing the sound booth. We could use a, another person or two on the sound booth schedule as well. So see me about that. And now we are going to blow out the candles. And then we're going to have our sandwiches downstairs, thanks to Diane, who just sneaked out. And coffee. And of course, Annabelle. She has really helped out. We had some, some problems with the service this morning. And thanks a lot for your help, everybody. We blow out this candle. Have a wonderful week, everybody. And now, we extinguish this flame. The world calls us to live with depth, meaning, and purpose. And now, if you would like to stand up and uh, join hands if you so feel like it, we take now our leave. If you would sing nice and loud, that would be great. We take now our leave, may peace be with you and all in his world. May May peace be with you, may peace be with you and all in this world. May peace be with you, may peace be with you and all in this world. Blessed be. Blessed be.